Would you like to watch an episode about TCP utilities? Yes, I would like to watch an episode about TCP utilities. Okay, I will show you an episode about TCP utilities, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, my name is Darren Kitchen. Hi everybody, my name is Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. I'm very excited to be back in the studio. I am too. It's been a while. I we missed you guys. just got back from Las Vegas. I can't wait to tell you guys about the big surprise, but it's going to take nine months. I'll give you a hint. Uh. Yes. <laughs> Shannon and I went to Las Vegas and you'll find out in nine months the big surprise. <laughs> it's not that. Ew. <laughs> I'm sorry, should we start over? <laughs> this is pretty terrible. <laughs> On today's episode, we're going to be covering some awesome utilities that you can use in Linux. We're doing all sorts of fun magic with TCP, kind of building on some of the stuff that we've been doing with Netcat a while back. Also, by the way, if you totally reckon recognized our three-way handshake for the cold open, good job. Yeah, so we did a whole bunch of episodes about Netcat on Hacktip. I did an entire tutorial, and you can see the entire thing over on uh, youtube.com slash hack5. Go over to the Hacktip series, and there's an entire playlist of those episodes. I'm very proud of them, so yes. you should check those them out. Those are pretty excellent places to start. Shannon does a great job with that series. I hope to see more of it. There's all sorts of cool, like Bash 101 and things like that. Yes. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is cool things that you can do, building on that kind of stuff. As you guys know, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with Netcat. We're going to take it to the next level. Yay. As you know, for example, we can use it to execute programs. And typically, we've done this in the past to do mm -hmm. things like reverse shells, which yes. you know is a lot of fun if what you're trying to do is create like a reverse, you know, have a connection so you can always execute commands and get yeah. a shell and run programs and stuff. So I don't know. Let's just do a, a brief example here. Okay. I'm just going to do. Actually, I need to figure out my um, IP address for you're on you Linux, for this. Right? Yes. Okay. And I'm I on Windows because I hate myself. <laughs> what? Just I know. Right? <laughs> well, you can do all of this, and we'll follow up uh, next week with some of the other ways to to make this more cross-platform love. But we will be focusing on Linux, uh, and Shannon will be uh, the client this time around. Aha! Yay! So I'm going to run some servers. I am uh, 10.73.31.139. So remember okay. that it'll come up a few times. So w if I wanted to uh, give Shannon access to my computer, I can use Netcat to listen on ta on port. I don't know, 1337, because we're late today. And the TAC E will execute any command. And if you're running Linux, you probably have bash. It's at slash bin slash bash. And that's what I'm in right now, my command interpreter. And so now I'm just listening for a connection, which okay. is pretty fantastic. Because now you can connect to me, and then <laughs> you can like issue commands and stuff. So for this, over on my Windows machine, I simply had to install Nmap for Windows, and it comes with NCAT, which is the Netcat version for Windows. Uh, so I just went over to that directory, and then I type in NC127. Nope. Wait, what is uh, it? 10.73 to 31.139. 139. And port 1337. Oops. One, three, three, seven. And now, I don't know, you can issue whatever command you want, but you're on my Linux machine. So if you do like ls, I don't know, tack la slash. ls, <laughs> tunnels. OK, so I got a tunnel directory in there. But you can do like ls uh, slash. I want to go into your tunnels directory. You could. Uh, let's see, ls slash. Ah, yes, give me all the things. Right, and there we go. I mean, it's a very basic <laughs> example. Uh, not only can we execute programs, but we can also, you know, execute scripts and yeah. things of that nature. And I thought that would be fun to kind of build on some of this stuff. So let's make a real quick script here. I'm going to cancel out of Netcat for a moment and do, let's see. So you see there's nothing in here but a tunnels directory. Let me cat uh, EOF to test.sh. This is a really fun one if you haven't already done this. So it's kind of like CopyCon in Windows or DOS for that matter. So shebang slash bin slash bash, that'll be the interpreter for this script. And printf, uh, just like you would do in like C, backslash r and backslash n will do some carriage returns for us. And we'll say, what is your name? And then oh, we'll cool. read a variable called name. So it'll actually ask you for input. I don't know, we'll use echo in this case. Uh, and again, we'll give little carriage returns and say, hello, dollar sign name. And then the next line, if I do EOF here, that's going to go ahead and save that file. So end now, of file. end of file, we have test.sh. If I cat test, 
.sh. You can see there it is. Do you so, need to modify it? Um, you're right. I actually do. Okay. I need to make it executable. Sorry. Thanks for reminding me of that because sure. this would have totally failed if I not. <laughs> uh, so what do I need to do then is chmod plus x test.sh. Executable. There we go. So now it's executable. Uh, so let's go ahead and share that on the network so that Shannon can use it. So I'm going to, again, listen on port 1337 just like before. But in this case, instead of bin bash, I'm just going to do test.sh. Oh. So now if Shannon goes ahead and connects, she'll actually get this program script, whatever have you. Program script. This is awesome. OK, so I'll t I'm still in my nmap folder. I'm going to go to nc, and this is 10.73.31. <laughs> 139. And then I'll put in port 1337, just like last time. So this time it's running the script. So it's going to give me what is your name, which he had in quotes. So I'll say snurbs. Snurbs. And then it says hello. Oh, it doesn't say snurbs. No, and there's there's actually reasons for that. Um, we're going to get into some of the other idiosyncrasies of this. And it has to do with all sorts of fun things like flushing stuff. And, and w it's more fun than Yay, we need code. to get into right now. Um, unfortunately, though, what I actually want to really demonstrate here is the concurrency issue that we have with Netcat. I mean, this is, works great in this little demonstration where yeah. I just want you to be able to get access to the script. But, but only what about one the rest person of this? at a time can get access to the script because mm -hmm. Netcat only makes that one connection between two machines. For example, I'll run this again. And if you go ahead and just connect, but uh, don't type in your name and hit enter, just go ahead and connect. Right. Okay. So now you're connected. If I come back over yeah. to my machine and do netcat 127.0.0.1, which is to localhost, I will get connection refused. And that's because it's already serving you up. Yeah, you're right. Which is no good because, you know, wouldn't it be more fun if we could both enjoy this epic buggy text adventure <laughs> written in bash? I, qu I quite agree. <laughs> right. Um, so, so what do we need to do? Well, what we need to do is look at a few other solutions, okay. one of which may be to use TCP server. Uh, you can find this from crypto or cr.yp.to. Uh, it is part of a, a suite of all of these different tools. And it's a pretty feature-rich program, I have to say. You've got things like, you know, it'll allow banners. So typically, you know, what you'd find in like Telnet or FTP or pick a protocol, you connect and there will be a banner. So we can say like, welcome to my computer. <laughs> I got fun stuff here. Um, we can do logging. So we can tell like what's going on, how many people connected, when they did. Uh, we can do filters. We have like specific rules so we can say like, you know, ban these IP addresses or things of that nature. There are a plethora of advanced features. Specifically in this case, what I'm interested in is the fact that it'll do multiple concurrent connections. Oh. Um, and it's a lot of times used in conjunction with QMail, which is an SMTP service. It's kind of outside the scope of this particular one. But okay. I do want to bring this up because uh, it's, it's not too difficult to get up and going with it. There's a great write-up that we'll have in the show notes over at bitereef.org. But essentially, and I should probably just breeze through this. So you grab, basically, you grab yourself the UCSPI TCP. It's version 0.88. You grab that, and you're also going to need this patch file. You, you know, untar it into this file or into this folder here. Okay. You apply the patch. Uh, there's a little sed thing that you need to do to, you know, fix a line in a uh, in conf dash. Uh, host file, but otherwise it's pretty simple. Uh, after that point, you just do a make, make install, and you're all good. Yeah. So um, installation, notwithstanding, we can actually go ahead and start using this with TCP. What is it? TCP server. So the usage. All right. So let's go ahead and actually build on our previous file here. I'm going to okay. close out this netcat, and I don't know. We'll do some more cat. EOF into that test file right there. And we'll say, um, <laughs> what is your quest? Yes. And I don't know, we'll read quest. And, and that looks pretty good, EOF. Great. So let's now use this in conjunction with uh, the TCP server. So TCP server, tack V for verbose, tack capital R, capital H, lowercase L and a zero, then zero, and then a port number, and in this case, test.sh. OK, so what is this doing? First of all, we're running TCP server, which we just installed. We're using the verbose option because we want a lot of output and you know tell us all the nitty gritty stuff. 
RHL0 is actually going to tell it not to perform uh, remote info, not to do any sort of DNS or local lookup on it. The zero specifies the interface. If I tell it zero, it's going to specify all the interfaces. For example, if I do an if config, ah, if I reduce my font size, or just maximize this, because that just looks terrible. You see I have at the zero and WLAN zero. So I could oh. specify if I wanted it only to be on one interface or the other. But if I say zero, it will go to all available interfaces. Cool. The port is 1337. And then just like the TAC E option in Netcat, we can now run test.sh. Yes. So um, now you could, for instance, connect to it. If okay, you, cool. In fact, this is a, you know, just hit up and enter, right? Because yeah. it's. That's true. Most terminals support that. What is your name? Snurbs. Hello, what is your quest? Yep, there you go. Snurbs. And if I look at my screen over here, I can Stars. actually see that I have a connection. And you know, I get a process ID. I see who initiated it, what port it's on, things of that nature. Cool. But what I really like is we've got 0 out of 40. 1 out of 40. So you were 1 out of 40. So what oh. this means is that both of us could be connected concurrently. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. That's, that's awesome. That's the number one thing that I like this program for. Um, and you know, you don't even have to write a script, right? So you could pretty much pass anything to it. If I wanted to, I could do. So we could chat back and forth, right? We could chat. We could use it to chat back and forth. I'll talk about another program that's better at that. Um, but if I wanted to, I could say date. So I'll just run the date command. Uh, date command pretty much just echoes out the date. Right, so now if uh, if Shannon connects, it'll just spit out the date. But it means that I can support 40 concurrent connections of people Aww. who will grab the date from me. That's really cool. Yeah, it's just any command or any string of commands. Okay. Uh, so TCP server is now serving up the output of the date command, and it will handle say, oh, you know what? If I wanted to, I'd do tax C 100, and I could support 100 connections instead of the default. 40 connections. Wow. Um, so if, if you're looking for something a little simpler, though, because I, I will say TCP server uh, has some idiosyncrasies to it, and it, it, it may be a little bit more complicated than what you need if you're just looking for the Swiss Army knife type thing. Uh, I recommend MCAT, which is kind of like a beefed up version of Netcat. And for that, let's go ahead and once again extend this script. So okay. I'm going to cancel out of this, and I don't know. Once again, echo EOF into test.sh and say, eh, I don't know. What is your favorite color? Okay. Yeah, and then read color um, and EOF that. There we go. So, NCAT, it works basically uh, like Netcat. It takes a lot of the same flags, but in addition, it has a few flags, namely TAC-M for the maximum number of concurrent connections, and then TAC-K, uh, which keeps the connection open. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a little demo here with that script that we just made. I'm going to now do NCAT, TAC-L for listen, TAC-P for the port, 1337 again. And then in this case, multiple current connections, I don't know, we'll leave it at 40. Tac K to keep that alive, and now Tac E, just like we did with Netcat, and in this case, test.sh. And so if I run that, and Shannon goes ahead and, and attempts to connect. What's your name, Schnurbs? What's your quest? Dinosaurs. <laughs> OK. And then what's your color? And that's it. Yes. And it didn't ask me what my color was, though. No, it didn't. Why did it not, actually? That's a good question. Let's find out. Okay. Okay. Cat test.sh. No, it didn't. Hang on. Aha. Uh -huh. I typed echo instead of cat. <laughs> it is cat. By the way, if you've got a long command like this, you can hit control A to get to the beginning of it and control E to get to the end of it. So now I'll run that again. Hooray! And once again, listen with netcat. And now you can connect to it from your machine and have it ask you there the three most important questions that have nothing to do with swallows. OK. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> um, another fun. I'm late in swallows, by the way. <laughs> African area. Never mind. Another <laughs> fun thing that you can do with NCAT is actually to do a very rudimentary kind of chat like IRC thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's kind of fun that this is just built in. So I thought I would uh, show it off. It's pretty neat. Basically, Inst we should mention though that like anybody on your network can pretty much see what you're chatting back and forth. Oh man, no, none of this is this is not using SSL it's or not anything. There's no whatsoever. TLS. <laughs> there's no encryption in any of this stuff. I highly don't recommend using it over the internet. But it's still <laughs> fun and it's but still cool. Then again, then again, you know what? I think this is a very important point because this is one of the major differences between Netcat and NCAT. Uh, 
wasn't really in the in, in what we were going to talk about, but check this out. If I do tag help, whoops. Oh. You know, the thing about large font size, there we go, <laughs> TAC SSL. All of those options right there yes. mean that I can actually give it a PEM file and, and I can actually use proper SSL. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, you could do a self-signed uh, or you could go and buy one uh, or soon it'll be free with Let's Encrypt, oh, which is yeah. pretty cool. That's a topic for another time. But yeah, so the fact that this supports SSL, so there is actually kind of no reason cool. why you couldn't run a text adventure out of a bash script with SSL over the internet and hope that there's, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> don't do that, don't do that. Uh, so anyway, on to the next Anyway, thing. on to what I was actually getting at here, which was we can use this to do a very rudimentary chat. And in that case, it's NCAT tech. Uh, again, we're gonna listen on port one through three seven, and we're gonna have maximum connection of, I don't know, like 40 people. We're gonna say K for keep alive. And then if you just do tac tac chat, Right, oops, not cat. See, I can't type today. Chat. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let that run over there and okay. in my right window, I'm going to connect to it with netcat 127.0.0.1.1337. And if you do the same, so you can see here, I And am I'm using your dot one three nine. Right, so same thing. So I'm connected to my localhost instance. Shannon is now connecting and we can see that we now have a new user and I can say, ah, Hi, Snurbs. And I see the hi, Snurbs. Yay, it totally works. And now you can see us chatting back and forth with each other. Wunderbar, it awesome. is the internet. And ASL, it's really? What is this, 1995? Speaking of. Is this AOL Instant Messenger? Yeah, it might be. What is. Okay. So, with all of that, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we get back, I'm going to show you some 16. fun other things that you can do Girl. with <laughs> the internet. <laughs> Where men are men, women are men, and teenage <laughs> girls are FBI agents. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. If you've been watching Hack5 for a while, you know how much we love Domain.com. And you know what? Hey, guys. Thanks to the buddy. Uh, and they're affordable. They're fast. They're reliable. They're easy to use. Shannon and I use them all the time. They're a go-to place when we want to bring our ideas to the internet. They've got a domain discovery system that makes it easy to take your mind and put it into the internet. And then your website's up and running in no time at all. And you know what's best of all? That they are huge fans of Hack5. They've been supporting us for years. And they've got the hookup for you. That's right. If you use the coupon coupon code HAK5, you get an extra 15% off when you check out at domain.com. So when you think domain name, think domain.com. So this is all fun and games and everything, but I kind of want to do this with no tools. No netcat, no nothing. Okay. No right. netcat, no ncat. We'll do that. We're yeah. going to do that because I'm running Linux and I can show you a fun way to do that and you're going to have to just like, Can't you oh, do that? What does? The, uh, the PowerShell, no other time. Uh, actually, reconnect really to the chat this. server because this is going to be fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, so just up and enter. I've got it running again here. And right. what I will do is you, you just keep chatting and I'm going to show you a fun way that you can do this in Linux just using uh, file descriptors and some of the just devices built in. Ooh. So here, let's take a look. Basically, I'm going to set up a new file descriptor number three to go in and out of slash dev slash TCP. So you've got a TCP device on your system. Kay. And I'll use localhost, but basically this could be any address on the internet. In fact, it could be DNS stuff too. I could say, you know, www.example.com oh, cool. slash 80, and that would connect to the web server on port 80 that's mm -hmm. running on this uh, domain on the internet. Uh, likewise, I can just do my localhost because I'm running that chat server on port 1337. So that's pretty cool. Yay. All right, so basically I've set up a, you know, I've set up a connection using the three file descriptor now, but, but now what? Well, here's the beautiful thing. Since everything is a file in Linux, yeah. you can just like, and, and this is really beautiful because you can build on top of it with pipes and redirection. And we're going to do some redirection because I can echo into it or I can cat out of it just as if it was a regular text file. Oh, that's so, cool. This is pretty easy. If I just do an echo tack E, hello, Snurbs. Nah, I'll, I'll get your name right this time. Oh, okay. Um, and then a backslash R and a backslash N to do some carriage returns and new lines. And I'm going to go ahead and redirect that into ampersand 3 for our third file descriptor. Oh. Oops. Burp, burp, burp. There we go. And now, if you take a look on your chat, you should see hello, Snubs. Sup, bruh. Okay, cool. So Shannon can reply and go ahead and keep typing stuff. Right. But how do I now see that? 
Again, it's just a file. So how cool is it that I can actually just go ahead and do cat? And in this case, since we've already set it up on that descriptor, we can just do boop, number three. And hey, hey, look at that. It's almost like tail. I'm, OK. Thanks, thanks, Shannon. You're so late. OK, Shannon, <laughs> I, I, you know, maybe it's the ASL <laughs> thing. She's stuck in the 90s with her memes right now. <laughs> but that's OK. <laughs> um, that's just some of the fun stuff that I wanted to share you with you. This has been coming up lately because I'm working on fun stuff for DEF CON. Yes! As Wait, which DEF CON? <laughs> OK, fake DEF CON stuff is happening before real DEF CON, <laughs> and I want real DEF CON stuff to go along with it. <laughs> Not licking your hand, Shannon. There's a story behind it. I'll I can't share wait to share the story August. with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, we're going to wrap up here in just a sec, but we got awesome gift from a fan. I'm super excited about this because it's going on my side of the set. You Maybe. guys know you can send us stickers, right? The address is right here. We got a message from Dan on November 27th, 25th. Seriously? What? Do you ever check your mail? No, I don't. This is from November. Yeah, I always check my mail. I'm going to get better at That's my New Year's resolution, is to check my mail. You know people send you bills in the mail, right? It's kind of important to check your mail. <laughs> what a noob. All right, so he says, I cut vinyl stickers from my pineapple. I thought you may want one. Oh, thank you. Check this out. Oh, wait, out. I should hold it like this. Look at that. That's really awesome. That's awesome. So Here. thank you, Dan. It's like shine. all shiny and everything. That's so cool. I'm going to put it. It's like my nail polish. You know, I don't want to mess this up, so I don't want to do it on camera. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to put it over here. Aww. Love me some pineapple vinyl. So I want to make more awesome. of these. This is so rad. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Um, and you guys can send us uh, stickers as well if you'd like to be on the walls. Good stuff. Um, hey, you know what? You could come and see the walls in person. Yeah, you right? can. So we're going to be having another pen test with Hack5, and you can find out all the information about that at pentestwithhack5.com. <laughs> I was like, is that the right website? Pentestwithhack5.com, and it's from March 11 through 13. We do training here at the Hack5 warehouse this with Darren Kitchen, Sebastian, and Mubix. They teach you everything from the Wi-Fi pineapple to the land turtle, USB ducky, Metasploit, all sorts of things, and you get hands-on training with the developers of our products. So it's 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 also it's one of those things that fun. nobody really does. Well, the other thing is, it's not just like you get hands-on with the tools and with the developers, but it's also ridiculously fun because it's nothing like any other infosec training. Yeah, it, there's a storyline. Yeah, there's, there's a storyline. There's like, like absurd you have to fight. missions. It's very hands-on. Uh, you get out in the field. You you we roam we around. We give you swords. The, we, there's LARPing involved. There's no so <laughs> <laughs> There is fear, though. Yes, check it out, uh, pentestwithhack5.com. Uh, we hope you can make it. And if you're running a hacker space or you're a member of a hacker space that might potentially want to host uh, Pentest with Hack5, Ooh. get in touch with us. It's, um, it's training at hack5.org. Uh, we're noodling on some stuff for you know the summer season, doing uh, maybe a Hack Across America hacker space tour, yeah. Pentest with Hack5 kind of. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Um, but yeah, you can let us know, you know what you think as well uh, at feedback at hack5.org or leave a comment below. We love to see those. Mm -hmm. Also, I uh, also wanted to mention real quick too, uh, we just did a little bit of revamping with Threatwire. We'll s we're still doing support with that through Patreon over at patreon.com slash Threatwire. But Darren's going to be coming on uh, once a month for an early access video just for patrons about security tutorials and stuff. So if you have friends or family that might be interested in that, Definitely recommend it for, for them, as well as a great spot for you guys to learn more about what's happening with internet freedom and security. So, it's yay. all sorts of good stuff. You can find yeah. the rest of the shows, too, uh, including Shannon's show with Patrick, a uh, tech thing, over at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash hack5. If you want to get involved in some of the forum stuff, there's an awesome forum. Thank you guys for posting and keeping that alive. It's been like over 10 years of running this forum. It's so much fun. Wow. So forums at hack5. Uh, org, um, irc.hack5.org as well. Awesome, you know, just to like hang out in there. Uh, we have so awesome community. Yes, we really do. Really, really appreciate do you guys hanging with us. It's been so much fun. Um, I've been having a lot of fun doing vlogs as well. I know that you are too. So uh, hack5.org slash follow uh, is where you can find us on social media and all that jazz. And with that, uh, uh, Oh, uh, and then hakshop.com. That's that actually is the thing oh, yeah. that like supports us yeah. like 99.9%. .9%. So appreciate that. Um, with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm 
Snurps, snurps. <laughs> Dress you techno lust. <laughs> snurpsy bergs. Oh my god, it's snurps. Do you wanna watch Act 5? Watch Act 5 with me. Hello, welcome to the rip. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> we got what? That wasn't even a second I... into the show? Do you wanna watch Act 5? We will study TCP IP. <laughs> This is just getting worse and worse, <laughs> Shannon. We can't do this. We can't do this. Okay, fine. Hello and willkommen auf Hack 5. No, I can't do it. It's actually willkommen Zoom Hack 5. Okay. We're Welcome always Hack off 5. Rails. rails optional. <laughs> just like pants. Otoko no ko wa baka desu. I am, I do not look at oh, Chewbacca, actually. Oh, sorry. Otoko no ko hito wa. I will heat your house. Next on Learning Languages with Hack 5. <laughs> C++. Oh my god, that's Nerdsenberg. Oh my god. Gersperms. I love Gersperms. 